So what I want to discuss is bullying within the trans male community. Hey, so I had to jump in because like Buck said, we are going to be discussing bullying within the trans community today, and with that does come some uncomfortable topics. For that reason, I have left a content warning list down in the description below, and if you feel so inclined, please go and check that out. But without further ado, I do hope, well, I don't want to say I hope you enjoy the video, but I, I do kind of hope that you enjoy the video. I worked really hard on it. I really think it's becoming something that is destroying our community. Move on over and let us have our community back. And taking away so many positive, amazing things about our community. And my mother f is gonna find you. I'm gonna find where you live. And really, I believe that if we don't learn to start loving each other and we don't start to learn to respect each other's individuality within the community, we will not grow. But you will not have a voice in this community as long as Trampa is f***ing alive and as long as Trampa has a f***ing mouth. Every day I see hate towards each other. Every day I see on the internet bickering and anger and you're not and you're not and you're not that is not appropriate it is not okay and i'm showing them what you kids are f doing to our system that we built many years ago in order to make sure this doesn't happen and you entitled little fuck that you can come in here and call yourself ftm non-binary and attack me you just made a mistake because now I'm aware of your little scams and I'm aware of the fact that you are trying to f*** the system up and I am aware of the fact that you don't even know what it means to be trans. How do we start to respect each other's transition? How do we start to respect and have love for each other? And how do we start the conversation right here, right now, you guys? Hey, I'm Alexander Jasper J, and today we're going to be diving into the wild world of Buck Angel. Who is Buck Angel, and why do I want to talk about him? Well, he's somebody who brands himself as a role model within the trans community, and I'm not going to argue that he doesn't work for that. I just don't necessarily buy it. I wonder why. It's pretty much common knowledge within the community that you don't out other people. It's a bad thing to do, a taboo, a no-no, if you will. The reason for that is because it's dangerous. It has the potential to get people killed now, and it definitely did back in 2003. So, if you're unaware, back in 2003, Buck's ex-wife had an affair with Lana Wachowski. And if you don't know who Lana Wachowski is, I think you might be mistaken, because she's one of the creators of The Matrix, V for Vendetta, and Sense8. The masterpiece, Sense8. I'm not gonna argue that Lana was in the right in that situation, she wasn't, but there are proportional responses and then there are disproportional responses. And what Buck did is he traveled around to every single tabloid he probably could, every single publication he probably could, and he told Lana Wachowski's story outing her as gender non-conforming, like a cross-dresser or trans, he didn't really care at that point. He was just angry and he wanted to hurt not only his ex-wife, but Lana. The reason I'm not using Buck's ex-wife's name is because while Buck Angel and Lana Wachowski are public figures, she is not. During this whole situation, Buck Angel didn't just out Lana Wachowski, he also outed his ex-wife as a sex worker. So I need to stress this at this point, don't out people, just don't do it. Let people have agency over their own identity. It's not your place. A lot of us find safety in numbers, but some of us still do prefer to find safety in solitude. Most of us can respect that, but sometimes some of us have lapses in judgment, especially during emotionally charged moments. That being said, those lapses in judgment don't usually span multiple years, making their way into multiple publications, and you aren't usually quoted under multiple names. Because back in 2003, Buck Angel was being quoted under his legal name, Jake Miller. But he later gave interviews in 2006, after his career started taking off a little bit, and he started using Lana Wachowski's story as a means of self-promotion.
in every interview he gave, he plugged his porn career, and he stopped interviewing as Jake Miller. He started interviewing as Buck Angel. Honestly, what he did back in 2003 was bad enough on its own, but the fact that it continued on after his ex-wife and Lana got married, the fact that it continued on after he met his next ex-wife, which by the way, that situation, also a mess. And the fact that he not only profited off of it, but used it as a means of self-promotion, and somehow through that, became a role model for the trans community, it it really just doesn't sit right. And honestly, he harassed Lana Wachowski. Like I said at the beginning of this video, V for Vendetta is a Wachowski film, where V for Vagina is a Buck Angel film. He made a porn parody of the film made by the woman his ex-wife got married to after cheating on him with her. Are you serious? Oh my god. So that's just a little bit of backstory about how Buck Angel became relevant, because yup. But my first exposure to Buck Angel was actually in 2013 when I saw one of his 2006 interviews that he did with Howard Stern. And when I tell you that I was immediately wary of this man, oh boy. He's a girl. It's a girl. Yeah. It's okay. We can look. <laughs> Dude, if you got a vagina, you're a girl. I'm so Dude, sorry. That's I, okay. I, I understand uh, that you don't Let me see your vagina. Let me see this. Look at that. I bet this guy was a it's hot shit. It's a oh, big man vagina. Wow. Oh, oh, man. man. This is crazy. Oh, <laughs> this is a wild show today, wow. man. You're a gay woman. You're a gay woman. Look at me. Look at me. You're a nice girl, but you're a gay woman. How do they give you a penis, and what kind of thing is it? It's why do you not... think I'm standing here with a pussy? That's right. why, because the surgery sucks. I'm not going to get a limp piece of meat. Or I also have BuckAngel.com. Is my... All right, BuckAngel.com. Yeah. We should uh, absolutely plug Thank that. And, and what do you know about this Wachowski brother? Is he going to become a woman? Well, that's very interesting because when he came to see my wife, he was a cross-dresser, and uh -huh. that was just his kinky thing, and so then all of a sudden, you know, as things started to progress, he was like, she was saying he's a transsexual, and as being a transsexual, <laughs> I don't think he's a transsexual. I think he's a cross-dresser. I just had a really uh -huh. weird thought, because to me, this is a girl. Uh -huh. <laughs> you want to get on the Sibian? That'll prove you're a man. Disgustingly fascinating. Yes! <laughs> oh, come on. Oh. It's a woman. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh. Make it like a man. Now you start to look more like a chick. <laughs> <laughs> that's impossible. Come on. That, that's the gayest thing that's ever been done in the show. That's the worst ever. thing ever. ever. That is the worst ever. thing. Ever. The gayest thing? I'm Without never going to have sex again. It was a girl, technically. <laughs> Did you vomit? No, I almost... It smells, man. <laughs> look, I understand. It was a different time, and I understand Buck Angel did porn. I don't understand pulling down your pants for a room full of cis folks who clearly do not respect you or your gender. And then immediately after that, he sat down to speculate on Lana Wachowski's gender. He made himself a representative for the trans community. He said that as a trans person, he didn't believe that Lana Wachowski is trans. I am not comfortable with the idea that people who are supposed to be leaders in our community denying people access to that community, and I'm certainly not comfortable with people who are supposed to be our role models getting wet for invalidation. In recent years, however, Buck Angel has really put an emphasis on separating himself from the transgender community and instead identifying as transsexual, and he asserts that the distinction is that transsexual people medically transition while transgender people just don't, which isn't entirely correct, and he seems to abandon his assertion that he is transsexual and not transgender when he stands to, you know, profit off of it or benefit in some other way. Like when you take a look at his dating site, you'll see that he is branded as the world's most famous transgender man, not transsexual. and. That's wrong. Even if he was transgender, he wouldn't be the world's most famous transgender man. One thing of note about that site is that there are in fact no non-binary gender options. A friend of mine actually asked about that and the response he received was a little bit strange. It seems Buck Angel feels he cannot represent the non-binary communities in his site because he himself is not non-binary and therefore cannot adequately represent the non-binary community. Which really isn't an excuse if you're making an app 
by trans people for trans people, you shouldn't neglect an entire portion of the trans community. What you should do in that instance is instead collaborate with other people who are non-binary so they can help fill in the gaps in your knowledge base. But he then wanted to say that he's not a trans woman, so he can't make an app or a site that caters to trans women either. But trans woman was a gender option on his site. Can we make this make sense? Because these puzzle pieces don't seem to fit together to me. So a really cool thing happened where my camera battery died and now it's two days later and I'm trying to finally finish filming this, so wonderful. So Buck likes to do this thing where he plays the good transsexual so he can get in with them cis folk, and he often throws members of the trans community under the bus in order to do so, and sometimes just the trans community in general. The main targets of this abuse are all too often non-binary folks. Buck in the past has said that you can't be FTM and non-binary because FTM is apparently a binary term. And you entitled little f think you can come in here and call yourself FTM non-binary. He doesn't think that you can be both non-binary and a lesbian. And he doesn't believe that non-binary people should have access to medical transition, despite whether or not they have dysphoria. Dude, okay, let me let me just figure this out. How can you be simultaneously not knowledgeable enough about non-binary people that, you know, you can't include them uh, in the gender options on your dating site, but also knowledgeable enough about non-binary people that you feel confident in not only policing how they identify, but how they transition? These are the games that you're playing? I don't enjoy them, Buck. I don't enjoy them one bit. Still, this dude claims that he is totally cool with non-binary people. He supports them 100%. And you know what his, his proof of this was? What he brought to the table to convince people that he loves and supports non-binary people? He f***ed one. And I wish I were joking. I wish I didn't have to explain to a 57-year-old grown-ass man that just because you sleep with somebody belonging to a marginalized community, just because you're friends with somebody belonging to a marginalized community, does not make you an ally to that community. The sad thing about the situation is this isn't even the first time Buck has pulled out this card. He did the same thing when he was being accused of trans misogyny. He essentially just said, how can I hate trans women? I them all the time. Dude, that's that's not how it works. I just want to make this abundantly clear. Until your allyship is publicly and consistently demonstrated, you don't get to use it as a defense. And even then, you should still own up for your shit when you make a mistake, because mistakes happen. That's human nature, and when we make mistakes, we get criticized for them, and we take on that criticism, and that's how we grow as people. Honestly though, I don't know if that's something Buck Angel is capable of doing. He doesn't necessarily seem the most receptive to criticism, and that's definitely putting it a bit lightly. I have seen people try to educate him, and it always winds up with Buck just mocking them in the most ridiculous ways. I've also definitely seen people leave him just like straight up hate comments, not criticism, but actual hate comments. And the way that he reacts to those is just horrific. Like. Yes, they're hate comments, you're not obligated to treat these people nicely, but when you're supposed to be a representative for the trans community, you probably shouldn't laugh or imply that you're laughing at the prospect of a trans person's healthcare potentially being taken away. Like, that's a very real reality a lot of trans people are facing right now. Not only does he have the audacity to do that, but when people are criticizing him, he then tells them that there are real issues that they could be focusing on, like the fact that trans people may have their healthcare revoked. So that's f***ed up. By the way, do not go and send Buck Angel hate comments. He does not react well to criticism when it's legitimate criticism. He's not gonna change his ways because you tell him he's a f it's just not gonna work. He honestly views himself as the victim, and he's very quick to hide behind his followers, even when it doesn't necessarily make the most sense. Like when he was the 56-year-old man threatening the 18-year-old Calvin Guerra. I don't like Calvin Guerra in the slightest, but I do think that it is wildly inappropriate to threaten to show up at somebody's house with 30,000 people 
because they said something on the internet you don't like. I will say, however, the way he says Calvin's name is absolutely beautiful. It's music to my ears. Who is this Calvin Garrar? Who is he? The irony of that whole situation was Buck was basically just mad at Calvin for essentially following in his footsteps. Hear me out. Calvin is a mini Buck. Revolutionary, I know. He's definitely lucky that Calvin didn't press charges in that situation because, oh my god, that could have gone over very poorly for him. I don't understand how this man is a role model within the trans community because that's really not how anybody should act ever. And also, he tried to scam us. Yeah. That happened. In 2007, Buck Angel gave an interview, and in that interview, he was asked for his opinion on fundraising within the trans community, and he essentially said something along the lines of, real men don't fundraise, they get a job and work for their surgeries. So when he launched his own fundraising platform, it definitely raised a few eyebrows, and rightfully so. So the setup for the whole thing is really confusing and I'm gonna try to explain it here. Essentially the way that it worked is you would make content on this platform and you would put your name on a list to get funding for surgery and eventually your name would make it to the top of the list and you would start earning money from other people. But while you're waiting for that, you're still able to make 50% of the funds produced by your content. Then 25% goes to somebody whose name is on the list and the other 25 goes to hosting fees. The problem with this whole setup is the fact that in order for everybody who signs up for the site to get funded, they would need an infinite number of people coming in, which just isn't a sustainable model. So yeah, that project shut down in about a week. So, you might remember from the clips of the Howard Stern interview that I played, Buck Angel called phalloplasty a limp piece of meat. The full quote was actually a limp piece of meat that hangs between your legs. Unfortunately, that's not the only awful thing he has said about phalloplasty. So there was whisperings in some of the trans groups that I'm in that Buck Angel had posted pictures of people's phalloplasty results on like forums and discussion boards without consent. He actually also did that on Twitter at least once, and when he got called out for it, what he responded with was disgusting. They should be hurt by the photo. It's not okay to want that, smiley face. I'm teaching people to love their bodies, not mutilate them. I really don't know why this man thinks he can dictate what other people do with their own damn bodies, and I don't know why he thinks he can call somebody else's surgery mutilation, but his top surgery wasn't mutilation, his hormones weren't mutilation, his blown out tattoos weren't mutilation, but if you want bottom surgery, you just need to love yourself more? that. Yeah, teaching trans people how to love and how to connect with their bodies is a good thing, but Buck doesn't do that. He only promotes self-love when it's consistent with his experience, so he adopts the mindset, but he absolutely does not live in it. If he did, he would not be calling trans bodies mutilated. Some people can't connect with their bodies, and so they take steps in order to form a connection, and to shove a wedge in that by calling them mutilated publicly on an open platform is just despicable. Again, I'm not gonna argue that Buck doesn't work to maintain his image as a role model within the trans community, but there is a reason I don't buy into it. He probably has done good in his life, and he probably has helped out a lot of people, but Buck didn't seek out activism. He fell into it because trans people are starved for representation, and they saw themselves in his work. And I think Buck Angel took advantage of that. Because yes, he does work to maintain his image as a role model within the trans community, but he also does a lot to undermine that. And while he's done some good, he's also caused a tremendous amount of harm. I'm not saying that Buck Angel is irredeemable, and I'm not saying that he can't change, but I don't think he's going to make an effort to do so, at least not anytime soon. Hey Buck, I don't know if you're watching this, but if you are and you've made it this far, this is me inviting you to please prove me wrong. And not in your usual way of screaming, get off my lawn, but instead when someone comes at you with a piece of criticism, listen to them. Try to take on that criticism and do better going forward. Make an active effort to change because what you're doing right now just isn't working for you. You might also find it incredibly beneficial to maybe get a social media manager. I don't know, that's just my advice. You don't have to listen to it, but you probably should.
And until then, I'm personally just not going to support him and I won't be watching the documentary that he has coming out on Netflix. Anyway, you should totally follow me on Twitter and while you're at it, if you have any like screenshots or anything relating to Buck Angel being, you know, Buck Angel, make sure to send it to me, tag me, and then also hashtag not my trampa. I want to get that hashtag started. I really want to get that hashtag started. But also I am creating a master post on Buck Angel because all of the master posts that I've seen have been, you know, incomplete and not really the most masterful of posts, though very informative and definitely helped me making this video. I just kind of want to make a complete master post. The master post of master posts, if you will. Anyway, um, peace out, Scout people. I shall see you soon. Bye!